Today in the microbiology, we are starting with the concepts related with the structure of bacteria. right? These are general concepts related with the structure of bacteria, bacterial cell. First of all, a few words about the shape and size. Everyone knows that bacteria are primarily having three types of shapes. When bacteria are circular, we call them, yes, co cocci, cocus or if they are multiple cocci. And if bacteria are rod shaped, we call them, yes, yes, rods or bacillus. And if bacteria are spiral shaped, what we call them? Spiro, spiro kids. Right? These are the, these three basic uh, shapes. Right? And then there is another uh, group of bacteria in which bacterial cells do not have any definitive shape. Right? And when bacterial cells have irregular shapes or not well-defined morphology, we call it pleomorphic bacteria. What we call them? Pleomorphic bacteria. Pleomorphic shapes. Now, the question is that what is the what is the main factor which is responsible to maintain the shape of bacteria? Yes, question goes to Jose. Cell wall. Cell wall, right? Cell wall is responsible to provide the, maintain the shape of bacteria, right? We'll go into detail of the structure of cell wall later, right? A classical example of cocci, everyone knows like staphylococcus or streptococcus, there's so many bacilli, right? For example, any bacillus, any bacillus. Please tell me E. coli, Pseudomonas, Salmonella, Shigella, there are so many. Spirochetes, Triponema pallidum, Borrelia burgdorferi. Yes. And can you tell me some group of bacteria which are pleomorphic? Yes, this must go to Miguel. It's easy. Bacteria which do not have cell wall. Every bacteria oh has cell wall except one. Mycoplasma. One bacteria which does not have a typical cell wall is mycoplasma. So it's very easy to understand. Mycoplasma in last lecture I told you do not have the cell walls. They have just cell membranes which are having sterols. Right and because they do not have cell wall and as you know that cell wall is responsible for shape. So, of course, mycoplasma does not have a definitive shape. There is no need to memorize it, it is so simple. If mycoplasma do not have cell walls, so they are pleomorphic, right? And again, it is worth remembering because mycoplasma do not have cell wall, cell wall active agents like penicillins and cephalosporins, imipenem, vancomycin, bacitracin, they do not work on the mycoplasma. Is that right? Because they do not have cell walls, you cannot. Uh, use those antibiotics which disrupt the cell walls. Then another very basic concept is that uh, bacteria, especially cocci, may be arranged in a very uh, different type of cocci, may be arranged in a different arrangements. For example, some cocci are arranged as, what is this? Diplo cocci. Diplo cocci. Some are arranged as chains. What are these? Streptococci. Some are arranged as clusters, like bunch of, uh, you know, cluster of grapes. What is this? Everyone should know Staphylococci. Is that right? What is the uh, range of the size of bacteria? Bacteria vary in the size, but they are from 0.2 micron meter to Yes, 5 microns. So this was the easiest thing which we, we, which we will discuss today. Now we come to the detailed structure of a typical bacteria, right? And we will start discussing structure of the bacteria from its cell 
salvon like all other cells bacteria also have a cell membrane right so let's suppose i am going to draw a bacteria here and this is bacterial cell membrane right this bacterial cell membrane has the bacterial protoplasm and right and this bacterial cell membrane is also called cytoplasmic membrane right outside this bacteria have cell wall now what is the basic structure of cell wall i will spend a lot of time how the cell wall is synthesized what is the basic structure of cell wall because many many antibiotics work on the cell wall right so what is the basic structure of cell wall primarily we say that it is made of sugar backbones i will go into detail structure later that there are sugar backbones i will make them here okay with this color black color okay these are your sugar black backbones right these are also called glycans right i'm first drawing a very simple diagram now these backbones are having peptide links what are these these are peptide links amino acids chains with these backbones they are multiple peptide links and these peptide links for different backbones of sugar are projecting to each other right these are amino acid chains or peptide chains now the point which you need to understand is that these black are the sugar backbones which are also called glycans what are they called glycans and these reds are a minor short chain of amino acid four or five amino acids right so these are also called yes peptides this red is called yes peptides now they are glycans and there are peptides right and all these are cross linked now you look at these what are these peptides these peptides are cross linked with each other right so they are cross linked with each other in this way when they are cross linked with each other so what you can see all the glycan backbones the black glycan backbones are having the peptide short peptide chains and these short peptide chains are yes cross linked with each other in this way whole molecule of 
peptidoglycans they are cross linked around the bacterium is that right how many molecules of peptidoglycans are around one, one bacterium yes miguel is going to answer us how many molecules approximately of peptidoglycans are present around one typical bacterium you don't remember you never had time to sit and count that right busy man what about you the whole concept is there is one molecule it is one single macro molecule because all the, this is like a mega mega polymer of peptidoglycans is that right all of them are cross linked with each other in the end it is one single molecule but of course a macro molecule am i clear why i stress so much because later on we'll see drugs will disrupt the structure right and produce problem now this all the peptidoglycan macro molecule which is assembled around a typical bacterium right its major function is number 1 to provide the typical shape of a bacterium number 2 control the size of the bacterium but the most importantly most importantly yes ibrahim what is the most important function of this cell wall do you think it work as a main permeability barrier does it uh, work as a main permeability barrier it control the things which go in or go out no it is not a major permeable barrier it is very very peptidoglycan layer is very very porous right here in this major permeability barrier in this diagram is cytoplasmic membrane later on i will tell you in gram negative bacteria there is additional membrane outside that is also permeability barrier but peptidoglycan mega macro molecule is not a per major permeability barrier for the bacterium it is the major structural support for bacteria for bacterium the most important function of peptidoglycan is yes who will tell me the most important single most important function of peptidoglycan is question goes to lewis the single most important function of cell wall peptidoglycan yes please sunny single i don't i don't want 20 function good student should know only one function yes rahul no so oh my friend came with his idea no one knows it he says cell wall is doing the energy synthesis look for energy we need enzymes my friend glycan backbones or short peptide are not enzyme energy synthesis miguel will tell us energy synthesis is of course not cell wall function energy synthesis is function of oh my god miguel could not be more wrong miguel tell us oh my god miguel tell me that function of the energy production is by mitochondria my friend bacteria do not have mitochondria so energy production is from the enzymes which are attached with the cytoplasmic membranes these naughty enzymes are energy producer peptidoglycan has nothing to do with the energy production right am i clear so energy production is the one of the function of yes cytoplasmic membrane i'm still asking what is the most important function of the cell wall peptidoglycan the question goes to shan prevent the bacterium burst uh, rapid food okay he says that most important function of the peptidoglycan is to prevent the bacteria from osmotic burst and the answer is right that's great now let me tell you why this concept is important and why osmotic burst occur look actually bacterial interior right inside of the bacteria is very very hyperosmotic usually as compared to the solutions in which bacteria are present for example bacteria may be in your saliva or in your tissue fluids or in your mucosal fluids right 
usually bacteria which are present in our human body they are surrounded by the fluid right which is less osmotic than the interior of the bacteria it means bacteria cytoplasm is very very hyper osmotic as compared to the most of the human fluids is that right now look if bacterial cytoplasm is hyper osmotic and outside fluid is having less osmo osmolality then water will move yes water will move in because bacteria cytoplasm is hyper osmotic whenever bacteria is present in less osmotic fluid bacteria will absorb water and due to this osmosis of water from extracellular environment to intracellular environment bacteria will start yes swelling bacteria will start swelling and if there is no cell wall bacteria will keep on swelling and eventually it will burst so it means bacteria bacteria have a natural tendency to undergo osmotic blast they are not terrorists but they have a natural tendency to undergo osmotic blast, osmotic burst whenever they are present in hypoosmotic fluid as their internal fluids are very very hyperosmotic. Bacteria are very happy that nature has provided them with macromolecule of peptidoglycan. So when water goes in, the membrane, cytoplasmic membrane of bacteria swell. But this peptidoglycan do not allow the bacteria to keep on swelling indefinitely. It prevents the osmotic burst. It does not allow the bacteria to absorb too much water and swell up. Is that right? That is the most important function of the cell wall. Now you must be thinking why Dr. Najib is so fussy about this small thing. Again pharmacology. The drugs which you will be using very frequently. Penicillins. Cephalosporins, vancomycins, bacitracin, and many other drugs which are disrupting the bacterial cell wall. Because what really happens, those antibiotics which disrupt the bacterial cell wall, and if bacterial cell wall is damaged or formation of synthesis of bacterial cell wall is prevented. Let me tell you what happens. When a parent bacteria, one bacteria divide into two by binary fission, one bacteria by binary fission divide into two daughter bacteria, initially, initially newly formed daughter bacteria are not hyperosmotic. These are the newly formed bacteria. This was the original bacterium. Original bacteria had a, what is this? Peptidoglycan. Now this concept is very very important. When one bacterium divides into two daughter bacterium, newly formed bacteria do not have cell wall. They do not have cell wall. But their fluid is not hyperosmotic. This is the mature bacterium with hyperosmotic fluid. Newly formed baby bacteria do not have hyperosmotic fluid. As newly formed bacteria start concentrating their cytoplasm and become hyperosmotic at the same time newly formed bacteria start secreting peptidoglycans and start synthesizing their cell wall so as bacteria start getting mature their membrane cell membrane is secreting what peptidoglycan and bacteria may start making cell wall by the time bacterial cytoplasm become mature and bacteria had made enough by the time bacteria's cytoplasm become mature and cytoplasm has become enough hyperosmotic by that time bacteria has also synthesized what is this cell wall so that osmotic burst is prevented now what really happens when you give your patient who is suffering with bacterial infection, 
a person is suffering with susceptible bacteria and you give them penicillins or cephalosporins, what penicillin and cephalosporins are exactly doing, my friend? They disrupt the? Remember, they do not disrupt the cell wall. Cell wall which is already, attention, cell wall which is already formed is not significantly, this is not significantly disrupted. Penicillin and cephalosporins basically disrupt the formation of new cell wall. So, when new baby bacteria are made and new cell walls are being synthesized in the presence of penicillin or cephalosporins or, or vancomycin or bisitracin or cycloserine, in the presence of these antibiotics, cell wall synthesis is not proper. And when cell wall synthesis is not properly done, bacteria, protoplasm keep on getting mature and hyperosmotic, but cell wall is not there to prevent the osmotic burst, these bacteria keep on absorbing water, keep on swelling and then burst. It's a very horrible way to kill a bacteria. Is that right? That is what your penicillins and cephalosporins are doing. That they disrupt the, in a simple medical student way, they disrupt the cell membrane. But actually, they disrupt the formation of proper cell membrane. And when the proper cell membranes are not formed, cell wall does not have enough strength to prevent the osmotic burst and it is not the penicillin or cephalosporin which directly kill the bacteria, it is the osmotic burst which kill the bacteria. Now why this point is so important to understand? Because good doctor should know that cell wall active agents like penicillin and cephalosporins work best when bacteria are dividing. If bacteria is not dividing, do you think baby bacteria are made? The one bacteria should divide into two. This will disappear and two will appear and then they will start making cell wall and penicillin and cephalosporins will disrupt the synthesis of proper cell wall and osmotic burst will occur. But if you have given bacteriostatic drug, if you have given the patient bacteriostatic drug, which does not allow the bacteria to proliferate and does not kill the bacteria also. Bacteria are not dividing. Do you think you can kill then these non-dividing bacteria with penicillin and cephalosporins effectively? Answer is no. Am I clear? 